Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University, and for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through the engineering and manufacturing development phase of the overall defense acquisition system. That's the middle phase here. And if you'll recall, our technology maturation and risk reduction phase has done a good job of bringing our technology up to snuff, and we're confident in that. So now in the engineering and manufacturing development phase, we've got to get ready for production. Like every other phase, we're kind of getting ready for that next one. And to do that, we need to complete the build to design and then prove that that design can be manufactured and that the design meets the user's requirements. To enter this phase at milestone B, we have to have adequately reduced the risk on the program. Uh, we have to have some approved requirements, in other words, a capability development document and full funding. Major activities include completing the detailed design, as I talked about, also establishing that at the critical design review. In other words, we're going to look at that detailed design and make sure that it is what it should be, and that establishes our product baseline. Then we want to demonstrate the manufacturing processes by building uh, some prototypes and production or deployment representative prototypes based on that design. That will improve out system performance and also system supportability, interoperability, and producibility. In the meantime, we do have to interface still with our warfighters in terms of JSIDs and getting a new capability document, the capability production document now, is what we're looking for here at the end of this phase. So if there are any refinements in the requirements, any lessons learned that need to be captured in the requirements documents, then we have an opportunity to do that here. Also, we need to stay funded. We need to stay within uh, our goals, within uh, affordability and keep working the PPBE process to keep the program funding where it should be. Within the program management lane, we want to update our acquisition strategy once again because we're looking forward further into the future here at production and sustainment. We also want to continue our proactive risk management by keeping track of our earned value management and our technical performance measures as well. We want to collaborate, again, with the requirements folks and make sure that any adjustments that need to be made, that we have a good mutual understanding of those and what they should be. We also want to assess the build to design and make sure at the CDR that that really is what it ought to be. In other words, it's complete and we have good confidence that that design will work. We'll get even more confidence when we assess the prototypes that come out of that process that should be production or, or deployment representative. Production readiness also needs to be assessed as part of a formal technical review called a production readiness review and we'll have uh, all of our program office pretty much is going to be involved in, in that and all the aspects of it and we'll talk about some of the other lanes as we go through here. For contracting we want to finish up our source selection that we started back in the previous phase and award an EMD contract or contracts, depending on how you're doing that. And then we want to release a draft RFP and RFI looking at our production contracts now. So when, once we've got that contract in place, we want to start planning uh, the next set of contracts that we use for production and support. We also want to manage our contract performance, continue to take a look at how the contractor is doing in terms of cost, schedule, and performance and capturing that data. And we want to conduct that source selection starting before we get to milestone C, uh, just like we did in the previous phase, so that when we get a milestone B decision, we're ready then to award contracts for production at milestone C. Our financial managers need, again, to keep track of the money and update those cost estimates and uh, make sure that going forward we're meeting our, our goals. We also need to assess the financial health of our industrial base. That will give us good confidence that whoever we're using to produce this uh, has the capability not just in terms of manpower and facilities but also financially to do what needs to be done. We also want to analyze the affordability aspects of the program here. This is going to start to uh, be big bucks here uh, when you talk about producing actual systems and then supporting them in the field. So we definitely want to look hard at affordability once again. We also want to assist in establishing the should cost targets. This is something that's going to continue throughout the life of the program here. We want to look for ways to drive down cost on the program and then use that money to provide better capability in some aspect to the warfighter. 
And then we want to manage our funds execution as usual. We want to make sure that we are obligating and expending our funds according to our plans or identifying any cost savings early uh, so that we can have the most flexibility possible in using any additional funds that we could identify. Our systems engineers are going to be deeply involved with the contractor in making sure that we have a good final design, detailed design for uh, the system. They are also going to manage technical risk for us, continue to track those technical performance measures that we identified. They're also going to be the focal point for conducting that critical design review in the middle of the phase that establishes that product baseline that we're looking for. They'll need to update their systems engineering plan once again here. And then once we have actually built um, some prototypes based on that design, um, they're going to be able to assess production readiness at that point, looking both at the production processes and the performance of those prototypes. Speaking of the performance of the prototypes, how we're really going to assess those is test and evaluation. Uh, early on in the phase, before we get those, we can still do testing, developmental testing uh, on subsystems and components. Uh, as things get more mature, here we can conduct developmental tests on those production or deployment representative prototypes. We also want to keep up with our modeling and simulation, save money there where we can, have a, a good balance there between the actual testing and the simulation. We want to plan for the next phase. We're going to have that big final exam for the program called Initial Operational Test and Evaluation. So we want to make sure that we are set up for success there. So we want to make sure we plan for that and update our test and evaluation master plan to make sure everything's in place. We're going to conduct some operational assessments because um, you need to prove that the system as designed and built here works in an operational environment. Kind of the only way to do that is with some operational type testing. And so an operational assessment is definitely in order toward the latter end of this particular phase for our test and evaluation folks. For software development, now we're actually starting to, to get some software builds in. So we need to assess the software functionality of those builds and readiness for deployment. We want to look at vulnerability to cyber attack again, looking at that program protection plan. And we need to plan for deployment for the next phase. When are we going to deploy the different builds of software? And when are we going to update it? How is it going to integrate with the hardware production? So all of that has to be planned for as well. We need to continue to refine those program protection plans and uh, keep ourselves safe from uh, cyber attack. And then we need to track those performance and quality metrics in software and continue to do that as part of our risk management in software to make sure that if something is coming up, we have good advance notice of it. As you can imagine, our production quality and manufacturing folks are going to be deeply involved in this phase. Uh, they are really looking at, can we produce this? Are we ready for production by milestone C? And how do we get there? So they're going to look at the Build 2 design very hard to make sure that that is indeed producible. They're going to assess the key production methods that we're going to use when we build our production representative prototypes. And then we're going to make sure through uh, these folks that we have demonstrated the manufacturing process here to a degree that gives us good confidence when we actually go to production at Milestone C. And they're going to be the focal point for conducting that production readiness review there at the end of the phase that then will help give us that confidence. Our life cycle logisticians are putting more and more detail into the life cycle sustainment plan now. And there are several things they need to do during this phase to make sure that we're ready to produce and field a system in the next one. They need to influence the design for supportability to make sure that final design when we get to it at CDR is supportable. They also need to track support metrics we can gather more and more information through the developmental and operational testing that we might be doing during this phase to see where our reliability growth curves are and those kinds of things. We also need to demonstrate acceptable system supportability, demonstrate it. So in other words, we're going to have to take those uh, production representative or, or deployment representative models and actually do some logistics demonstrations with those to make sure that our support processes, our repair procedures, all of those things are in place and they actually work. And then we're going to define product support packages that we're going to use in the next phase when we actually start deploying our systems to the warfighter and refine the life cycle sustainment plan one more time based on what we gain in terms of knowledge 
from all these activities during the engineering and manufacturing development phase. So that was a quick rundown of what happens in EMD, the middle phase of the defense acquisition system. I hope you'll take advantage of the other videos that we have for each phase and also take advantage of all of the good online resources that DAU has. There'll be some links at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.